Your attention and what you pay attention to, what you spend your attention on is your biggest asset. Think about it. Anything that you want to achieve in life, anything that you want to do, anything you want to accomplish will require your undivided attention. And anything that you're spending your attention on is actually reducing your mental capacity to use on any other activities for that day until you go back to sleep and then wake up again. Oh, come on. Okay, we got fucking quagmire over here. <laughs> what the fuck was that? Oh, Thailand's wild, guys. So, what are you spending your time on? For me personally, I found myself spending a ridiculous amount of my attention on the modern day stimulating activities such as video games and social media. I have spent and wasted a disgusting amount of my attention and time on shit which has not elevated me to any new heights at all. I think on Counter-Strike Global Offensive alone, I have nearly 4,000 hours of uh, time played. And on Grand Theft Auto 5, which I think is my most played game of all time, I have a lot more than that. I used to run home from school to play Grand Theft Auto 5. I took days off school to play Grand Theft Auto 5. <laughs> I've also spent a disgusting amount of time mindlessly scrolling Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter. On top of the sort of modern day stimulating activities which I've spent a lot of my time on, I've also spent a lot of my mental capacity and and attention on, to be frank, people who don't deserve it. Very negative people, people who don't add value to my life and they actually seep value from me. Everything you're doing within your day, you're spending attention on, you're spending your mental capacity to do X or Y. If I now said that I fancy getting some water, I'm going to spend some of my mental capacity thinking, where do I get the water from? Where do we keep the water? I think it's in the fridge. That's a very small example, but I'm making the grand point of literally everything you're doing is using your attention and your mental capacity. And you only have so much of that in a day, depending on your lifestyle, depending on how ambitious you are. So why on fucking earth are you wasting it on shit which isn't elevating you to a new level? If you're waking up first thing in the morning and looking at your phone scrolling in bed and then wondering why you don't have the drive or ambition to actually start doing more of the activities and the habits which will make you a better person, there's your answer. Because you're starting your day in such a negative way and literally starting off the cycle of wasting your attention and mental capacity so early on that yeah, of course, you've started the day with this heightened level of dopamine and now you wanna do some outreach for your work, you wanna outreach for your business. And of course, on the dopamine scale of things, it's fucking down here. But you've started your day up here and now you're telling yourself, okay, now you've gotta go back down. Of course you don't wanna go back down. Of fucking course you don't wanna go back down. You need to start your day with this shit. <laughs> and then once you've done the good work, you can then maybe go up there if you deserve it, if you want to. You can also waste your attention and your capacity, your mental capacity on other things, such as porn, low quality activities like uh, clubbing. Clubbing is so like, come on. <laughs> A lot of people think the height of fun is clubs and it's not, it's fucking not. It's actually really sad and shallow. Once you take a step back and you start experiencing more of life, you realize how shallow clubs really are. Low quality entertainment too, watching just bullshit, fucking world star hip hop vine compilations. All of this shit is eating your mental capacity and your attention span. It's called an attention span because you don't have much of it. And the more you consume bullshit entertainment, the smaller your attention span is going to become. And you're gonna find yourself in a place where you want to achieve things, you wanna do things, but you can't actually do it because your brain is just so fried on all this bullshit. And that has absolutely been where I found myself since I actually started to realize that there was more to life than just fucking bullshit wasting my time and being depressed. I fried my brain so heavily that I find it really difficult to find the ambition to actually like do things to elevate me forward. It's an uphill battle for me. And there's a lot of damage that needs to be undone and it's a work in progress. But if you can catch yourself right now, if you can catch yourself and stop doing this shit, you will save yourself a world of hurt. And if you are already at that stage, begin the reversal process immediately. Stop spending your 
your time around negative people, stop spending your time doing bullshit things and start doing more of the right things. Otherwise, you will find yourself in a point where you are so frustrated and you don't know why you can't find the ambition or the motivation to do anything. You can feel trapped inside of your own brain. Describing how that feels to you, how frustrating it is, how angry it made me, how sad it made me, the amount of despair that I felt because I wasn't aware of why my brain wasn't working is indescribable. And that is the consequence of falling into the modern day trap of overstimulation. And there's millions upon on millions and millions of people who are doing exactly that as we speak and they don't have a fucking clue of what they're doing to themselves. So if you're one of the few who is aware that what you're doing is detrimental, then that's something to be really grateful for genuinely. But don't be complacent. Do something about it immediately because you don't want to end up where I ended up, where my brain was just so fried I couldn't do anything at all. And I still struggle with this to this day. Every single day I struggle with these thoughts and lack of thoughts because of how fried my brain is from years of abuse I put it through. So what do you do? How do you reverse the damage that's been done? How do you stop doing these things. First things first, have this mindset. Do less of the wrong and more of the good. If you're spending half an hour reading, that's not only half an hour of learning and spending time with an author who is really smart and has a lot to teach you, but it's also half an hour where you're not spending watching fucking TikToks. You have to be patient with this. You have to continually never remain complacent, constantly pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. What's a more uncomfortable thing for me to do right now? Is it for me to sit here and play video games or is it for me to read? And so many people are going to hear me say that and say, read, that sounds fucking cringe, that's boring. I want to play Valorant. Well, to you, I say, good fucking luck, man. Good fucking luck. Look at the way the younger generations are going right now. It's not a good place to go. There's a reason that mental illness, depression, anxiety, all that shit is skyrocketing. Why are people now more depressed in this modern day and age, rather than 80 years ago when literally world war was happening. People are more depressed now. That's not a coincidence. It is lifestyle and it is literally the fact that most people don't even have the ability to use their own brain nowadays. It's completely hijacked, completely hijacked by software engineers. People don't have any level of discipline. So if you think reading is gay and you'd rather go play Valorant, have fun, man. I hope to see you in the next few months or next few years when you realize how fucked your brain is. Because this shit isn't a fucking joke, man. I continued playing games when I wasn't even enjoying them for an extra, like, four years. For four years straight, I played video games every single day and I wasn't enjoying a second of them. The only time I found joy in them was when I was playing with my friends. 90% of the time I'm playing with my friends, it was still toxic and it was fucking AIDS. But I think I needed that. I think I needed to actually get to the absolute very bottom of the trenches before I could actually take action. It would be fantastic if you had the humility right now to admit that this is probably the direction you're heading in and you should probably take this really seriously and make some positive changes. But if you're not ready for that, good luck. I hope to see you soon. If you're ready to make the changes, be patient, do less of the wrong and more of the right things, and continue to progressively overload that. Always be mindful of what you're doing, and if you struggle with mindfulness like I do, I would really suggest practicing meditation. And it's also been incredibly valuable for me to have an accountability partner, someone who is living with me or someone I spend a lot of time with, who's keeping me in check. That right now has been hamster. So Hamza's literally been calling me out on everything. I've been calling Hamza out on everything. It's awesome. Having someone literally wanting nothing but the best for you and to be honest, accepting nothing but the best from you. Very valuable, very helpful. I would fucking love, I'd fucking love if people heard this message and took action before they found themselves in the depths of hell, which I found myself in before I found some sort of fucking strength to pull myself out because most people won't have that strength to pull themselves out at that point. They will be fucking done. They will be done out here at a very young age. They're complacent. They're done. They've peaked at 18 years old. And I think that's fucking sad because there's so much more to life. I hope this video is helpful. <laughs> I hope it was insightful. If you're not already, join the Discord. It's linked in the description. Follow me on Instagram, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care, guys.